the podcast. My lips are so dry. <laughs> the pie. As my lips are so dry, I can't say podcast. <laughs> I try to say it and my lips get stuck together because it's so dry. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Way Too Broad, a show and tell program for really, really ridiculously excited grown-ups and monsters in the computer, based on all the scary faces we were just making that no one else can see. I'm Hannah, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Ben. Hey, I have a confession. What's up? What? Uh, I was, I was uh, holding my breath during room <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. It's, it happens to the best of us. It for some reason, feels like you should be. I don't really know why. Because you're like, it's breath- room tone, not breath tone, not breathing tone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it hurts, too. I mean, like, I sometimes... I to breathe. <laughs> I actually think it's Hopefully. really good for you. Mm-hmm. I've been working on this theory <laughs> the about breathing. breathing. <laughs> I think it's actually really cool and good. What about breathing yeah. in the time of airborne viruses? I feel like Ooh, it's great less point. good. Ooh, wow. Like, has anybody explored the angle? Simply stop breathing. <laughs> That's a little, mm. yeah. I don't think, <laughs> I, don't, I would not like to continue on that um, yeah. <laughs> thought thread. Thank you. Okay. Guess I'll die. <laughs> what are we drinking? Oh, did I? Oh, I did do this. Okay, I'm first this week. What wow. are you drinking? Wow, you did this. <laughs> I did this. I made the outline so early that I like forgot i'd done it oh, wow. um i got two drinks i got a perrier lime mm-hmm. um we were supposed to get the the plain one but they were out of it so we got the lime good instead st- that's a it's a good story about Thank you. a good origin story <laughs> how do you that's feel so about exciting. that that's my super villain origin story no it's good it's fine it's good i do miss plain seltzer mm-hmm which is like an old person thing to say for sure, but it's the truth. Excuse Unless me. you mean seltzers on a plane, because I miss Ooh, that too. I miss wow. taking a plane the rides. Yeah, wow. And I also got a beer. Well, it's like a half a beer. It's, I think, Ian thinks it's one I've brought before. It's from the same, uh, I know that I've brought this brand before, the Paul Anner Munchen, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's from like Munich. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the beer is Salvatore Double Bock. It does sound familiar. Oh, yeah, it does. I think 7.9% alcohol by volume. So, yes, it's a strong boy. So, nice. I'm drinking that. And uh, who's next? I think it's me next. Yeah, Aaron. Pop, uh, pop and a push. Um, I've got a decaf coffee uh, and a nice water. Silly Friday, nice Silly water. Friday decaf coffee. Because you know what? It's not decaf enough to drink on a weeknight. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> I had coffee ice cream earlier, so I mm! feel like that's helping, helping I me. I love coffee ice cream. Same. So Same. much. with the. W- you know, I almost brought, I actually just finished a bowl of ice cream, and I want to bring this up. I know we still have to know what Ben's drinking, even though we can guess. But <laughs> I wanted to... A poll for the listener if you feel like sending us an email or texting us. I eat my ice cream with a splash of milk on top. And I'm just curious if anybody else out there <laughs> does that. Because apparently I'm a freak of oh, nature. I tried that the other What'd day. What'd you think, Ben? I put too much milk on. Okay. Yeah. Um, just need a splash. But, yeah. It was more than a splash kind of accidentally. Mm. But it takes a while to get the technique. Good. Why was it so good? <laughs> It was fine. I don't know if it was like significantly better than normal ice cream, but I did like I did the method of like mushing it around a bunch mm-hmm. until it was basically a milkshake. Mm-hmm. At which point I was like, yeah, I mean I like milkshakes. Yeah. So it was good. I get so thirsty sometimes hitting a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> sometimes when I hit a bowl of ice cream, <laughs> I'm get- not supposed to hit it. <laughs> You're supposed to eat it. I get really full. And the, and I mean, <laughs> really thirsty. And I find the milk, splash of milk helps. You know what happened? Here's the thing, though. 
I get thirsty while drinking milkshakes also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I typically don't mash it up. I typically keep the milk, and then I'll take a bite of ice cream, and it'll have a spoonful of milk. And so it's like taking... I don't think I would like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So Because, like, I, I started taking a couple bites of it like that. Yeah. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> and so I had to mix it around I just to really, make it, like, palatable. I, like, 100% of the time when I'm eating an ice cream at home, I eat it that way. For the listener, Ugh. what happened was I sent a Marco Polo about this because I knew it would be controversial. But I didn't know how. Like, it was <laughs> there were some strong negative reactions to my ice cream methodology. Yeah, Hannah raises her hand. And Kylie as well. You know, yeah, Kylie is fucking disgusted with me. <laughs> she still likes me better than Hannah, but she was disgusted. <laughs> and so I was like, well, that's so weird because I do it all the time. And like, Molly doesn't think it's weird. Well, it <laughs> turns out Molly does think it's weird and has always thought it was weird. Which, but just don't say anything because she's so nice wow. and wants me to shine my shine. That's beautiful. It is so yeah. weird. <laughs> I just love it. I always do that. I just always do it. I, and I have I since think, I was a kid, and I feel like our grandmother did that. So You you do say As that, and I feel uh, like that's a form of emotional blackmail <laughs> towards me and everyone else <laughs> who had a negative reaction. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, I mean, I apologize for the truth, I guess. <laughs> mm. I, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel like I hurt you. <laughs> anyway, what's Ben drinking? Yeah. Water. Beautiful. How two many? Of them. Ice water. Ah, there we go. Come two, on. Two, 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 two. All the ice melted on well in not on, on it. In one of them. Put it on top of the <laughs> ice melted. It's no, no. <laughs> a really good song. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Put it on top of the ice mountain. That's it. That's the whole song. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. That's a bop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put, it. Put it on top. She's writing it down. She's writing these hot ice lyrics melting. down. Can't let them slip away. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> um, okay. We have a really important up front. Wait. Did we have... I don't think we have any emails. I checked. We do not have any emails. Okay. So. Um, oh, okay. So something happened this week. Uh, <laughs> something beautiful. <laughs> it, <laughs> um, that we need to talk about. And it involves a bunch of audio files, which is so great. Perfect. For what we're, <laughs> for, for what we're doing here, which is a podcast. Um, so I'm going to have to drop them in um, afterwards. We can't all listen to them together right now, but we've all heard them, right? Ben, have you heard the been on this audio journey? Yes, I, I've heard. Are, are there more than, is there more than, I heard the original and I heard the version you made. Are there more than that No, now? that's it. No. No. Okay, yeah, Does I've there heard, need I've heard to be more? Then. Okay. <laughs> no, I just thought maybe <laughs> a bit more happened. Not enough for you. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm just going to kind of explain it and then I'll drop in the audio files for people to to hear it themselves. So I, on Saturday, February 20th, um, which was uh, just after we had recorded the last episode of the podcast, like the morning after, I woke up with a song stuck in my head and it wasn't a real song. Um, I mean, it wasn't then; it is now, and <laughs> and I didn't wake up with any of the context of the song. I just woke up with a song, and so the first thing I did was pulled out my phone and recorded what I remembered of it really quickly as soon as I woke up. Um, and so I'm going to drop that audio in here and just like bear in mind that I had literally just woken up and was not trying to be a performer. I was just sharing an audio file. We don't mock Katy Perry. Don't mock Katy Perry. Don't mock Katy Perry. Okay, so I sent that out, and I sent it um, in the, our Dreams channel on Slack, and I also sent it into our random channel on Slack. And Aaron spotted it in one of those places. And then, Aaron, do you want to tell us like what you did after that? Because I only really saw the the final product. No, I want you to. I want you to. This is your story. Okay, but but I want to hear about your process. But okay. okay, so I was inspired by this song. I thought 
that it was beautiful and deserved to be more than more than it is. Are you listening to it right now, Ben? Yeah. Ben's listening <laughs> to it right now. So anyway, I hopped into GarageBand and turned it into this. rocking the fuck out to it <laughs> so it was the same day it was like in the evening you sent it and i i i think i sent it hold on let's get these timestamps. okay hannah shared it at 9 40 and then i share i gave i gave her my art bomb at oh boy <laughs> what channel was that in that you shared it was it front hall I, random random oh so long ago it we, was we had such 4 14 4 14 p.m yeah Oh, there it is. So it's a minute. So it was a ten-second audio clip, and Aaron turned it into a minute and five-second-long song <laughs> with like a bridge in it. <laughs> yeah, it's using, really good. Using only my original morning voice audio for the for the lyrics. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and also like do, I want to know about so in the bridge there's like all this distortion mm-hmm. um, where you can hear a voice in the background that I wasn't even sure was mine saying we don't mock Katy Perry mm-hmm. um, which are the only lyrics in the song for right. anyone who was wondering what those lyrics were and um, were there other like I, then I wasn't sure if there were other spots where they were so distorted that I couldn't even hear that they were my like a voice anymore did you like do a lot of distorting on that original file and no, put, put it all over the place? No. So let me tell, let me walk through my process. So I just used GarageBand, just like out of the box loops and stuff. The big challenges were finding the tempo. Cause once you set the tempo and the key, you can use like their whole host of, of, um, of loops and they're all MIDI, um, you know, tracks. And so if you set those, you can kind of layer things and it just clicks into place. So those were the big challenges. The The tempo is like the hardest one because it's mostly on tempo. There's just kind of a little bit of a lag here and there. And then the mm-hmm. key for to find the key, I just kind of opened up my guitar tuner and just like sang the song and saw like <laughs> what kind of rose to the top. That was my very official me- method of finding the key. <laughs> um, yeah, but then after that, I was just playing around with, like, I just, like, had that looping, and I would just play around with, like, different um, different loops. And so, yeah, during the bridge, I have, like, your vocal track very distorted. It's, like, going through, like, an electric guitar distortion. Actually, let me open this up. Well, I don't know if that'll fuck with Audacity, so I won't. Um, and then that other vocal thing, you hear this, like... It's just like <laughs> yeah. a vocal track that was in GarageBand that just sounded perfect because it sounds like yeah. you're saying like we you don't, don't mock. mock, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that was just like luck of the luck of the draw there. It was so good. It was, so, and I had no idea it was coming. Aaron asked like one question that I did not answer <laughs> about what genre I thought it was. I'm glad you didn't because I wasn't. <laughs> Because I, I don't I think I would have t- changed anything if you like, oh, it was a pop song. Uh, yeah, it was. I'm sure it was. I don't I don't remember. I, I didn't remember well enough to even answer it. I thought about it and then I got distracted. So I did, just didn't answer you at all. But I would not change a thing about it. I think it's perfect. <laughs> and I've listened to it a lot. Um, I, last weekend, especially, I listened to it over and over again. <laughs> I There's like a really fun little laugh at the beginning. It's so fun. I feel like I um, have had you don't mock care. We don't mock Katy Perry stuck in my head for like most <laughs> of the week. 
<laughs> so I'm excited to pass that on. Uh, with a really important message. Probably yeah. one, of, you know, one of the more yeah. important messages. Yeah. It's <laughs> so funny. Uh, <laughs> and so I just want to make my subconscious just really wanted to make sure that I knew that we don't mock Katy Perry. And I'm so glad that Aaron is helping me get the message yeah. from my subconscious even further out to all of you. We got we got to we got to spread the word. Yeah. Yeah. So. So we'll do that. We'll drop it in the feed with the um, episode, like at, at the same time the episode comes out. So that'll be fun. Although in a way, the song itself is mocking Katy Perry because the intro has this like annoying lady <laughs> singing, and then we're like, we don't mock Katy Perry, but it's like we're having some commentary on what Katy Perry sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's art. <laughs> That's right. It's deep. It's deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was um I was uh procrastinating from getting some of my nonfic reading done that day, so that was really truly a gift for me. <laughs> I'm trying to really I'm leverage glad. my procrastination projects as much as possible. Yeah. And you yeah, I mean if you're gonna procrastinate you might as well make high concept art. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. <laughs> Agree. So, Thanks for the collab. I really like the song. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Um, other upfronts. Oh, I have a quick Bon Appetit up or not Bon Appetit. Well, Reply All update. Um, which is they are taking a break for a while, so they're not going to finish the Bon Appetit series, and they're they're like not going to put anything out for a while. Mm. But they're not. They're not ending the show, but the, it was officially announced in a in a, like a three minute thing on their feed this week by Alex Goldman that uh, PJ and Shruti have left and they're not going to finish the reply all. Um, I mean the Bon Appetit series, which is kind of a bummer. Mm. But I've seen people be like, "Oh, what? They're just going to hold on to these episodes and never release them?" But like, I guarantee we kind of talked about this before. But I guarantee you, the episodes were not made. Like, they may have done all the interviews, I, but they hadn't put them I together. Mean, he literally said that on his Twitter. Yeah, yeah, he did. He put out a nice a nice thread about all the other people who work on Reply All, which was really nice. Um. So yeah, that's all still developing. But those are the uh, that's your. Reply all update corner. Oh, a little personal update. I've realized this week that my favorite sweatshirt, um, the best sweatshirt I own right now, does have a big reply all logo on the front of it. So now, unfortunately, it's it's an indoor sweatshirt. It's canceled. You should put a patch over it to get a nice patch. Yeah, but it has a big, huge, super tech support thing on the back of it. Like, get many patches. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a really good sweat. it's really hard to find a good zip front sweatshirt yeah so. agreed i tried to buy one um well I, I successfully bought one and i don't really like it okay yeah. i have a grape i bought one and it was from the T- tomboy x company which is for mm-hmm. like queer bodies which mm-hmm. are you know all body types but it doesn't assume anything about you know how you present um <clears throat> but the pockets of this thing are, like, very much right on the hips. And so they make your hips, like, super flare out. Hmm. They, like, accentuate your hips. And I'm like, my hips need no accentuation. <laughs> they accentuate themselves. And I just feel, I don't know, disgruntled about that. So That's annoying. Especially that's because that's right. not usually where sweatshirt pockets are. And it's not a convenient place for a pocket. It, no. In addition, not only does it is it an eyesore, it is not convenient because you're going to the front. Oop, going yeah. to the front part. You gotta wing your arms to the full side, like you're putting your hands on your hips. Put your yeah. hands on your hips, and there's your pocket. Is that helping anybody? Also, do, don't <laughs> things fall out of them? In that, in I that put anything scenario? in them because. <laughs> I put anything in because, like, I don't need my hips to look so big, even even inside. <laughs> wow. So no, good question, but no, <laughs> no, but with an asterisk. Yeah, because you don't put anything in them. That word's got too many s's. Yo, in it, Ben, <laughs> I was just thinking that. I feel like I say that word as asterisk, like. <laughs> 
I think that's what it should be. Yeah, yeah but that's not what it is. Aster- asterisk is too many asterisk. S's. Asterisk. I Come say on, asterisk. You can't ask me to say that many different consonant sounds all in the same way. You can't ask me to say all those S's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not asking you to do anything with the word asterisk, but I'm just telling you that that's how it's pronounced. I think we resent how you're kind of like saying it <laughs> precisely <laughs> to smudge it in our faces. Mm-hmm. Feels like you're saying. And there's the smudgeness. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like you're really pointedly saying the word correctly just to spite us. What word? Asterisk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you know what's another word that's like that? Uh, excerpt? Oh, God. I don't say that at all. Why isn't it, why isn't it just excerpt? <laughs> or excerpt. Excerpt. I just say it with a hard P at the end, baby. Excerpt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not like... It's like a soft, like... You have to like have the suggestion of a P there. It's like a But excerpt. you don't go like you don't yeah. go like excerpt. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like a like a soft little uh, You know <laughs> Yes. <Yeah>. Excerpt. <laughs> you know what's a word that I've given up on saying correctly? Like I usually do feel like I'm like pretty good at enunciating, but I won't I will not pronounce it February. That is like too <laughs> no. much trouble. That's it's too much trouble. <laughs> That's more attention than the month needs. It's such a short month. It's, it does not deserve <laughs> we can that just much attention. Ignore it. Feb. Let's just call it Feb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Or... February. Yeah, February. that's how I usually say it, quite honestly. Well, I say but February. If not- yeah, I say February. But I, if, if I can get away with it, I say February. Yeah. This is more fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Juan Wario. <laughs> Let me ask. Toddy is the teenth of Juan Wario. <laughs> Let me ask. Here's a word that I never say correctly. Here's a word. Whenever. Here's how I say this word. I say <laughs> entrepreneur. I can't say that word. Like that's how I say it. Whenever I say the word entrepreneur, I say I say entrepreneur. I can't okay, say I that word. That <laughs> but like, <laughs> okay, I heard. I I thought you said it correctly at first no. i didn't hear the last syllable <laughs> you kind of ate the you kind of ate one of the last <laughs> yeah, okay. syllables like that's because i said entrepreneur i can't say that word it's how i say that word <laughs> it's like it's like a southern drawl kicks in yeah entrepreneur at the end. entrepreneur <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. entrepreneur how do you say it entrepreneur entrepreneur like manure. At Does the that end. sound Pernure. right to you? Entrepreneur. Or is it preneur? I usually entrepreneur. say entrepreneur. That's <laughs> what I say. Entrepreneur. <laughs> I just kind of give it a long err for like, the last couple syllables. Yeah. Whatever. I don't have time for that shit. I'm busy going out there making money. I'm <laughs> on my own. <laughs> and g- don't even be starting entrepreneurial. <laughs> <laughs> what about entrepreneurship? <coughs> Entrepreneur. <laughs> Long. <Hanja. laughs> Long. Every time. Every time I say I say that now. You've ruined me, actually. I Hold wish on, I knew what just... episode that was on when I was trying to say lozenge, but I said lonja. <laughs> lonja. <laughs> Did it not make? Did a reference to that not make it to the title? Probably not. It's Look, not she says it like me. This girl says it like me. Hold on. Wait. Lange. Entrepreneur. 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 Laws. Why are you just yelling that at us? <laughs> I'm just sending you entrepreneur in the first five seconds of this video about how to say the word entrepreneur. That was bad. <laughs> she says it like me, but not like that time, <laughs> like all the other times. In this American English pronunciation video, we're going to go over how to pronounce the word entrepreneur. 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 It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound like a captain of industry to you? Entrepreneur? <laughs> no. <laughs> Preneur. What are the root words? What's the root of this word? Enter. Well, it, okay, the... I think I think 
I'm saying it wrong then. Yeah. I'm saying it right. It does kind of end in like an <laughs> Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. You're yeah. supposed to like keep your mouth open and kind of waggle your throat at the end. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. <laughs> You're just basically glossing over a lot of the letters. I feel like it. It's from French. That's yeah, my. That's my. Vi- the vibe I get. Well, that yes. that's how you would pronounce it in French. Entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? It, it's it's well, that's the verb it comes. Yeah. From. Did I pronounce Prendre. that right though? Oh. Prendre. Entreprendre. That's better. Entreprendre. So is that like beginning to learn? Undertake. Uh, prendre is take. Oh, beginning to take? Undertake. Undertaker? It's undertake. entre. It means undertaker? Entre means... <laughs> is entre a preposition? Okay, I'm going to Google. Does it Why mean between? Is the take word between? entrepreneur so dumb? Does it mean middleman? No. No, you know what it means. What's What's between? Between? Why are you asking? A, what are you t- what are you talking drink, about? She's drinking like an eight percent beer. What is <laughs> what are some synonyms I could use instead of the stupid word? Wheeler dealer. <laughs> mogul. <laughs> He's mogul. <laughs> Quiz kid. Impresario. Yeah, definitely. You should use Impresario I'm and mogul. Impresario. Yeah, and mogul. <laughs> yeah, the preposition does mean between or among. Among, more, more like among the stupidest words. So it's like a take between, like a go between, like a middleman. Fuck you, no, Ben. No, no, that's not what it means. It's a different meaning of that word. Hannah wants to make that happen, though. It's the only thing. There's a verb. There's a verb called entreprendre, which means to undertake. So it's an undertaker. To begin doing something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but not the definition of undertaker that we have. No, but that's what you could say here. And you could just say, you undertaker. know, like all these young undertakers out here who are starting up it. their new businesses. <laughs> yeah, if they're like, if they own their own business. Yeah. If they own their own, fu- you know, fucking funeral work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like an undertaker. I love it. A, it's like a pun. It's like a. It's like an occupation pun. Yeah. Wait. I actually never put together that it would be the same, like root French verb as enterprise, because the past, mm. like the past version of the verb prendre or entreprendre is pri. Mm. Oh. And so it's like it's done been undertook something you, something you have undertaken. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. That's interesting. That's beautiful fascinating it's beautiful should we pop in we let's pop let's in. do it okay great discussion <laughs> a lot of words thrown around great ed- that it. was the etymology section good job everybody <laughs> <laughs> um uh let me just put a little note here etymology section mm-hmm. next week stay tuned for our entomology section where we talk about bugs that'll be fun um, Did I say that wrong? No, no. Okay. I'm just, I'm just prepping us for next. I'm just putting in a plug for okay, next cool. week's episode. Cool. Um, okay, let's pop into me now. Welcome. What's going on, Anna? What's going on? I'll tell you. <laughs> tell us. Okay. So I had some. Uh, what are you waiting for? Okay. What are you I had waiting some- for? Love me like you do. La, la, la. Go All on, right, we're ready, <laughs> <laughs> I had some misgivings about bringing this as an obsession because I recently saw uh, like an actor on a critically acclaimed show on Twitter complaining about the idea of hate watching something because mm. there were shows that like were instantly like Emily in Paris, for example, was like instantly renewed for several more seasons, despite being like roundly hated by everyone because it got like a ton of views. Mm. People just went and hate watched it. And then there were other shows. I don't remember which one they were on specifically, but there were other shows that, you know, people are shocked when they're canceled because they're so good, but they just don't get like the, t- the type of like volume of actual eyes on them that some mm-hmm. shows that are famously terrible get mm. right so, so they were against the against like don't watch something if you think you're gonna hate it like what 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 about it yeah like if you start watching something and you hate it 
mm. stop watching it okay. <laughs> because sure. the because like the algorithm and like Netflix or whoever doesn't care why you're watching something. Mm-hmm. They only care that you're watching mm. it. So you're right. essentially supporting the continuation of that type of content by watching it. Mm-hmm. So that's makes I, sense. It makes sense. It, it's like very similar to a lot of discussions we've had in the past about like intentional media consumption. Excuse me. Um, uh, you know, so so I've been hate watching a show and I uh, have been uh, I've just finished it today. And I was like, I don't know if I want to bring this because I don't, really don't want to encourage other people to watch it because I don't like want it to get us get a new another season versus something that's actually good. But then I went and looked up uh, the information on it, and actually, it came out in 2018 and only had one season and has already been canceled. Oh, okay. So I don't give a shit. Excellent. Yeah. Prime hate watching. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's like and consequence I, free hate watching. Consequence free hate watching <laughs> opportunity. Ooh. Um, for you guys here, can Ooh. you still hear me? I just bumped my mic yeah. with my boob. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Boob. Okay. Boob. <laughs> boob. Um, so it's a show on Netflix. It's a kind of like renovation show um, called Stay Here. Oh, I love that show. Do you really? No, I've never seen it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was you great. got me. You got really, me. Really Your hope. face looks so genuine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You looked hurt. <laughs> oh man, Hannah! Oh my god! Oh my god! My favorite show. Your mom's on that show. <laughs> That's my mom's show. She made that show. <laughs> Karen from from that show you just said. That's her, that's my mom. Yeah, my aunt, <laughs> and I didn't recognize her. How I do we say aunt? Show. How do people say aunt? People say Let's that. See, aunt. aunt. On, I think I say both depending on context. But it, yeah, like I never aunt know. Brown. Like your mm-hmm. mom, I call aunt. Brown. I think I I've always Connie. said aunt, and my dad makes fun of my dad, our dad, not not, Aaron, dad. not Aaron's dad. <laughs> Everyone understands. <laughs> Me and Hannah are siblings. Most of our yeah. dad, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> most. Of my- <laughs> <laughs> the father to most of us. Uh, the majority makes dad. fun of me for that because. He's like, you never lived in a place where people dead. say it. He's like, he, I think he says, like, you never lived in a place where people say that, and neither of your parents say it, so you're weird for saying it. Mm. I think Something. I say Aunt Brown, but I say Aunt Connie. Yeah, because Aunt Connie sounds so weird. Aunt Connie. I can't you gotta, imagine. Yeah. 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 I say Aunt Deanie, though. I, I I say Aunt Connie also. I, no, I say Aunt, Aunt Connie. Connie. Oh, my God. I say Aunt it's Connie. It's a pairing. Yeah. It's like a wine pairing. Yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. pair the wine with the cheese, Ben. <laughs> Okay. I, my default is aunt. Though. Yeah, yeah. It's like aunt, right. and then uh, in desperate circumstances, you gotta pivot. Okay, Hannah. Sorry. Do you say ankle or uncle? <laughs> uh. Okay. Okay. It's a. Hannah. It's a show. Okay, the show is called Stay Here, and what this um, show does is it goes to help people who. Uh, so it's a it's a woman named Genevieve something who uh, I guess got famous because for- <laughs> <laughs> what that's her last name I don't know what's going on. It's my mom. <laughs> um, hold on, I I have some there's some information in this article. I found this article that like very well sums up my feelings on it that I'm going to share mm. with the with the um in the links. But okay, <laughs> that I will share with thee, <laughs> like old timey you. <laughs> oh, with thee, yes. Did you say that I will share with the links? Yeah. Well, I st- I, tr- I tried to. Yeah, I started to. <laughs> so silly on this great silly Friday. Okay, okay. Hannah, I'm gonna let Hannah get through this. But all right, proceed. Okay. So the so there are two hosts. One of them is named Genevieve Gorder, um, and I guess she's from uh, Trading Spaces on TLC. And then her co-host is a British guy named Peter Lorimer who does, like, the business side of it. And did I say? They're helping people renovate things that they're doing as, like, Airbnbs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So it's not mm-hmm. their primary home um, or it's not, like, they're in, like the space that they're renovating is not the primary home. Sometimes it's, like, attached or on the property of the loan or whatever. Um, so he and this guy is a 
Peter Lorimer is a former DJ and current real estate expert. Hmm. But like the former DJ part <laughs> comes up more more infrequently than you would think. Um which is kind of interesting. So like they they do all they it's like a home renovation show, but without any of the soul, because they're actively mm-hmm. trying to depersonalize people's spaces mm-hmm. and like maximize the profits they can make off of them. Um, and then also, uh, everybody who they're helping on this mm-hmm. show has way too much money. Almost mm-hmm. everybody, because not all, not all of them, but a lot of them. This is like a second home that they are specifically they specifically bought. Or they've upgraded themselves and they're keeping it to use as a rental property. There's mm-hmm. this one episode, it's fucking buck wild, where the couple that they're that they're working on their house, they're in Palm Springs, I think. Um, that's where the house is. The couple actually lives in New York City as their primary house, but they have bought they bought this house which um, was built in like 1969 and still has like a ton of the original like features and stuff. And they've been the couple has already been like renovating the house and like trying to bring it back to like exactly period perfect 70s like decor and stuff and um they are there are like just some areas that they haven't been able to do yet and so they basically are just like giving the show a big budget to do that for them to do those sections for them and like spruce up the out- exterior of the house basically but they also like it's kind of dystopian like they're nervous about because they 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 want the house to to remain period perfect, but also because they have bought a lot of stuff that is of the, of like from that decade to be in the house that has clearly cost them tens of thousands of dollars. They are hesitant to even rent the house out to people, even though that's what they bought it for. They hired like a special concierge type, like um, rent, rent handling service that does like screenings on people and sends them videos on like the best, like how, how to be a renter of these houses. And they install in the house, these things that I didn't know existed called um, noise monitors, which basically work like um, smoke, uh, smoke uh, detectors or, um, CO carbon monoxide detectors except what they're trying to detect is basically parties like it basically like sends a notification Ah. to the homeowner if the noise level gets above a certain threshold wow how fucked up is that wow yeah like it does say they're gonna tell anybody that rents the house that those things are there which is good i guess but like holy shit (laughs) yeah wow Uh, yeah yeah or like there's this guy who uh, bought this um old uh, old um renovated like it used to be a a fire station and he's living in the front part of it which is like the pretty part and he's and he's renting out the back room and they convince him in what seems like a minute but i feel like probably was a lot longer to literally cut his own living space in half and move into the back so that he can um make like twice the amount of income that he is on the on the section he was actually living in like they convince him to make his living situation less good and much smaller <laughs> in order to make rent money. out the part he wow. was living in. Yeah. So it's like, it's all like that pretty much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like actively trying to like, uh, not intentionally, it's not their intention when they come into these spaces or do these things, but like they're basically just like actively gentrifying any neighborhood that they're, you know, coming mm-hmm. into. Uh, <laughs> So it's really something. <laughs> I've been watching it before bed for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but it's just like I start craving it around like 11 p.m. <laughs> and then I watch it. So I feel like the more I've been thinking about hate watching, I understand like the social implications if you can, you know, sway. If it were like out now, you would encourage, you know, your viewing would encourage it to like continue. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you enjoy watching something, then you enjoy watching something. But I'm very curious about your psychoanalysis of a- analysis of yourself about why you think you enjoy hate watching this. Like, what what <laughs> is it that you like? What brings you back? Um, I guess like there's like this complete. Um, okay, let me give you an example. In the first, the very first episode of the very first season of this show, they were renovating a houseboat in Seattle. And um, Genevieve, the designer, who does very nice work, and that's certainly part of it, is that the places that they fix up are very aesthetically pleasing. 
It's the truth. And they, they do a good job. I will say mm-hmm. that. But um, <laughs> the very first place they fix up, um, the big, the first like big feature thing that she does is she creates like a custom door with a bunch of pieces of wood from the area. Um, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm drawing, I'm trying to draw from all the, the sort of, sort of some of the local flavor by putting in all these like native patterns and designs in the space. Uh, okay. <laughs> and it's like, but, and, 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 and I'm like, oh, is that what you're doing? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. But like it's that level of like complete mm-hmm. um, obliviousness to any type of like cultural implication to anything that th- that she's doing. It like starts that deep um, and that far back in history, and then it goes all the way to the present of like you know the gentrification thing that I was talking mm-hmm. about. Like there's something fascinating about watching like that. <sighs> And then I also feel like it's not so different from shows I used to watch with genuine enjoyment. And I feel like it kind of like, um, it's it's almost like I, f- I feel like I've learned a lot about sort of the evils of capitalism in the last year or two that I didn't ever think about before. And maybe I like to look look at back at them because I feel like I used to be more like them than I am now. Is that mm. Does that make any sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I don't know, there are a few things like that where, like, watching people enthusiastically participate in, like, uh, capitalistic endeavors feels, on some level, like, at the very least, very informative to me. And, like, obviously, I'm not saying, I'm not living, like, some idyllic, you know, socialist life over here. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, we all have to participate in capitalism to survive. But, like, I I feel like... um, you know, or maybe I'm trying to stretch my class awareness muscles. I don't know. That would make mm. Lucas happy <laughs> if that's what it was. <laughs> um, cause the, cause these, I mean, and I'm pretty sure that they're using, like, they're not using show budget. They're, they're like, they're like building a budget with the homeowners to fix it up. Mm. Um, which is interesting. So I don't know exactly why, but I do feel like it's kind mm. of like almost practice for picking out the, patterns and the things that are that are kind of wrong with it and and watching Mm, these mm -hmm. types of things critically in a way that i didn't used to you know yep yeah that's really interesting and it's also pretty at the end so i mean the heart also wants what it wants i mean yeah plain and simple plain and simple (laughs) i have also been just generally watching a lot of um home renovation shows like there's this you know i could have i could have well let's call this like a small secondary one um, there is a show that used to be, and this also honestly probably has a lot of um, darker undertones that I'm missing, but it's older. There's a show that I think started in like 2012 or 2011 called Rehab Addict on uh, one of the like DIY network or something like that. Um, and it's this woman, um, this like tiny blonde woman out in the Midwest. She's from like Detroit and um a lot of her show also takes place in minneapolis and she just buys old houses that are like not in the best shape and restores them but she doesn't like upgrade them or like do the typical like just take this house and make it pretty for whatever whatever the style is for that time she like breaks it down to the bones and like knows a lot of shit about the like what's going to probably be where and what's going to be under things and you know when when a house is likely to have hardwood and how to restore hardwood floors and it's really fun it's it's great i like it a lot that's a terrible name though i thought it was going to be about something like much darker yeah me too (laughs) yeah Yeah, and it's still going actually and it still has the same name i kind of would have thought they would have reconsidered that at some point (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that's um, that's a great example of like they didn't have a lot of people in the room they didn't have a lot of people from diverse backgrounds in the room when they came up with that name oh nicole curtis that's her name and and yeah the beginning of every episode i don't know if this is still true but in the earlier seasons she would say my name's nicole curtis and i'm addicted to rehab and that was how they all started yeah, well, she is rehabbing the houses, you know, but it's still like okay. They did that on purpose, though, which is even yeah. worse. What's going on yeah. with Hazel? Something bad. Hazel's a bad thing. She just she just she forgets she's a carnivore all the time. <laughs> wow, what's she eating? She has to eat everything. What's she trying to eat? 
insulation from wires I was stripping earlier. <laughs> well, that's just no good. If I leave, I have this jar. <laughs> Get a little further from the microphone, if possible. <laughs> okay, I'm moving around. <laughs> this is it's actually from from Ian or not Ian, uh, Lucas and Federica's wedding. It's the jar we got, and I now use it for storing like old uh, pieces of wire so and romantic. stuff that I've, that I've stripped. <laughs> um, but if I forget to, if I even the littlest piece, if I forget to put it in there when I'm when I'm working on my workbench and I'm cleaning up. Hazel will find it and try to eat it. I feel like that's like a level beyond forgetting you're a carnivore. It's like forgetting uh-huh. that you're an earth creature who eats <laughs> needs to eat like plant yeah. or animal material. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's she's it. weird. That's it. That's my whole obsession. Just hate watching Stay Here and kind of love watching Rehab Addict, but it's old mm. and has a bad name. <laughs> Soul news. <laughs> um, dope. That's it. Dope. 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 <laughs> Aaron, what's your obsession? Um, I've got a straight up repeat this week. I think both of you probably knows what it is. Straight up repeat. I do. I bet I do. I don't. Not my own repeat. repeat. But uh, what is it, Hannah? Uh, Stardew Valley. It's Stardew Valley. I've been playing that Stardew oh, Valley. Oh, okay. Have either of you looked at... Don't look if you haven't. Do you know what ep- episode number we talked about Stardew Valley in? Hannah brought it as an obsession. Hold on a second. I, 18. I've, I just remember there was one quote that I really wanted to read you guys from this article that I'm going to oh. link to. Uh, yeah, This came do. out right when the first season, or the only season of of Stay Here came out. So this is just a little, just kind of one of those, like, embiggened quotes from the article it's if you can avoid seeing this show as a lens through which to understand all of society's ills then maybe you'll enjoy it mm. <laughs> that's, like, that's exactly how i feel about it i just wanted to share that um and this pe- this article is really 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 good um so i recommend reading it okay sorry go on no no, no that's okay we're guessing what episode you talked about stardew valley and ben guessed 18 um eight can I look up now that I've guessed? Oh, closest without going over. It's Hannah. Episode Ooh. 11, Two Eternal Toddlers. Oh, of course. That's what the Actually, episode name's about. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, and Wait, that's our first episode that we actually titled, isn't mm-mm. it? No. I'll, oh, All My Wild Yeasts yeah. is. No, Way Too Scared is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, All my wild yeast, a bread redemption story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, so we talked about this in 2017, November <laughs> of 2017. Um, wow. Yeah, a long time ago. <coughs> and so I finally got around to it. The reason I got around to it, here's my origin story. <laughs> I was like, wow, you know, this reading two books a week thing is is to- is good. I'm, you know, enjoying it. I'm getting a lot out of it. But I just have not played video games at all since doing this for the most part. So I was like, okay, I had already picked out the book I was going to read, my fiction book, um, and I was like, I'll get the audio book and then play a game that I can like listen to the audio book with. And I was like, Stardew Valley fits the bill. And indeed, it was great. The first night, I played it for like hours and got through half of my audio book. <laughs> and then... Um, and then the next two nights I finished my audiobook and which was a total bummer just throughout the whole thing. So that's why it's not my obsession. It was just a nonstop mm-hmm. bummer. Um I t- like took a bro I took a brook. I took a break <laughs> from my like romance novels that I've been reading to like read this book that was just a nonstop bummer. And I'm like, that's why I read romance novels. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, it's so fun. So if you don't know what it is, it's a video game, and so you're good. a little farmer. So there's a lot to it, and I think Hannah covered the, it pretty well. There's a lot of things that you can do, um, and it seems like even as I'm exploring, there, there's definitely some directions you can go in that, you know, but what I like about it is you can kind of focus on the things you want to focus on. So, mm-hmm. you know, I have no interest in, like, trying to 
like woo somebody into marrying me. I'm like <laughs> the way I see it is like I've gotten into I've just gotten into town. I need to focus on my farm. I need to focus on me. <laughs> Iris has been through some shit. And this is a great chance to just get away, clear my head, start <laughs> over. Like, I don't have time to, like, socialize, right? I just got out of, like, a long-term thing, so I'm not really looking for... This is what I... The little story that I'm crafting. I'm not really looking for something. I'm just, like, hanging out. So another thing is I recently adopted a dog, and <laughs> in the game you can do, like, a random name. It's like you can choose the name of your pet, or you can do the random. And, like, the second... Dice roll uh, recommended shart s h a r t e and I was like hell yeah so it's just me and shart hanging out on the farm shart like ends up in my bed a lot like, we're just we're just like you know my days are lonely they are lonely I'm working but uh, but but gratifying right I'm like working all day on my farm. You know, at first it was really rough here. I felt like I wasn't really making ends meet with my farming. <laughs> me, me and Shart were like, <laughs> things were getting running thin. Me and Shart, but you know, I just kept at it. Right? That's what it's like. I got invited to these social events, and I'm like, I'll show up to buy like the seasonal seeds and stuff, but I can't stick around and chat. I've got, like, I gotta get back to the farm, right? I gotta put this time and I gotta clear my <laughs> land. I gotta save up for a chicken coop. And, you know, and then I got the chickens and then I was like, I, you know, feeding them is expensive. I gotta invest some money. So, anyway, I've been having a great time, you know, really, really focusing on my farming and my fishing and my livestock and just not really putting that time. Have you, you haven't been fucking with the mines at all? You know, I, as soon as I got a sword handed to me i was like no thanks <laughs> Same. as soon as i went down into the mine and i suddenly got a health meter i was like i don't think that's for me i gotta focus on myself right now i gotta focus on my farm i, I can't leave shart without a farmer <laughs> yeah <laughs> So that's kind of where i'm at mine's the best part no, i don't though. like mining that much i'm with aaron i love it do you like fishing aaron I like to fish, yeah, and I make yeah. good money on my fish. Oh man, I don't fish at all. My farming has. I have a my like first Stardew Valley file has. You know how you can like level up the skill, the various mm-hmm. skills like foraging and farming, and everything. I have like everything almost maxed out, and fishing is at zero. Wow, why don't you like to fish? I don't. I do, I just don't like how it works in that game. Oh. It takes practice. Practice. It's not practice. I'm interested in I'm, putting. I'm good at. I'm good at fishing. Honestly, like fishing made ends meet for a while for me and shark. <laughs> you know, I was able to like sell my fish. I sell enough fish to like get more seeds, and you know, my farm is actually going really great. And I've, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um. So anyway, I've been, you know, I've been having fun. I, I kind of feel it waning a little bit. This obsession. So I don't know, like. You know, my birthday's coming up in real life, not my farmer's birthday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Molly was like, you're going to work on your farm all day? And I'm like, honestly, like, I don't know if I'll still be into this game by then. Like, that's a, you know, I wax and wane with obsessions. I think we all do, but. Um, Have you been I'm to the new island yet? Blast. The new island? Mm-hmm. There's a new island. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. Was that part of the big update? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I haven't. I'm still doing my bundles and stuff, so I haven't really. My world is still a little small. Okay, I have two suggestions for you because okay, I, I'm like very on board with the concept of playing Stardew just exactly the way you want to. I think mm-hmm. it's built for that, mm-hmm. um, and I think that's a wonderful thing about it. Like the fact that I can specialize in fishing and almost never mine. Um, Actually, I have three suggestions for you. Um, One of them is I do think that there's probably more fun and interest to be found in befriending and even romancing the other characters than you might initially think. Um, because there's like really fun cutscenes and stuff associated with mm. th- like heart, there's heart events as you continue mm. to build up your relationship with them. And it's not actually just the romanceable characters making friends with people in the, in the town. Um, you get like certain events that there's no other way you can see them because they're associated with that person. 
Um, and they also like send you stuff like and recipes mm. and things. So it, it has benefits and I I like it a lot. Friends with benefits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say it's it's one of one of my primary focuses in the game. It's like relationship building, but that's definitely mm. like not the only way to play it, as I was just saying. The second thing um is the new island. I think if you talk to Willie or if you yeah, if you go to Willie's shop, there's like a door in the back. I haven't done it yet, but um uh yeah, you have to like gather a certain number of resources to be able to use uh, it, but there's like a boat now back there and you can travel oh. to an island and there's all kinds of cool shit on that island. You, um, yeah. Ian's been playing it and it's like so fun to watch and I really want to get back into it for that. And thirdly, um, you can also do multiplayer uh, now. And, yeah, and how that's, does that work? It's, it's really fun, uh, but you have to, I think you have to all be, you don't have to all be on at the same time, but, Right, but but like the the thing, the only thing that I don't like about multiplayer really is that time never stops. There is no pause in multiplayer because mm. uh, it just like logistically wouldn't make sense. Mm. Um, so that's frustrating because the days seem a lot shorter because it doesn't time doesn't stop when you go into your menu or even when you get a cutscene. So there have been mm. times that like I'll get a cutscene a little late in the day and I'll end up like passing out <laughs> because yeah. I can't get home in time. Um, so that's a little frustrating, but it's fun because like. If you're uh, if you're coordinating with each other, you can and, and you have like one person who really likes the mines and one person who really likes fishing and stuff, then you can like support each other in that way and be like, oh, I really need mm. this type of fish, but I hate fishing. You know, can you work on that today? And I'll get you like whatever ore you need or whatever, like that kind of stuff. Oh, and you so can. With- it's not like the existing you c- you couldn't come to my existing farm. It's like we would start a multiplayer game. Yes. No, you yeah. uh, you can do that now too. You can pretty cheaply add a house to your existing farm, and then you you oh, could really? have someone join that. Yeah. But you can't like. But they have to start a character at that. Yeah. In that farm, yeah. right? You can't just like you can't like visit with your current character to someone else's. Right. Farm. You would be starting a new like the person who is mm. joining your farm would be starting a new game, but they could play in your current game. Like, on do you your guys have farm. a game that I could join? We had one. We do, actually. We haven't played it in a while. That would be super fun to get all on at the same time. Mom was on it, too. It was a a good time. Um, I'll see if she's into that. Hey, Aunt Brown, let us know if you want to start up our farm again. Yeah, let's Um, do it. We could hop on Discord, and that would be fun. That would be a great time. Um, It had a good name. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, it's just that it was good. But yeah, it's... It's fun, and it also is one of those things that I feel like it does wax and wane, but it's fun to come back to and, like, re-enjoy or even, like, start a new file and just try a whole new mm, direction mm-hmm. on things. Like, it's pretty it's evergreen. Also, like, because the other, obviously, like, the other big, like, life management game out there is Animal Crossing, and Animal Crossing moves in real time, mm-hmm. so it, like, really rewards you for playing every day. Like, it's designed for you to, like, that. play a little bit every day. Whereas because Stardew Valley, like, only moves in game time, there's, like, not any repercussions for just, like, putting it down for a while and coming back to it. Mm-hmm. Other really than, like, forgetting that. things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much to do. So, some other reflections. Hannah, I will take your advice into consideration. I'm still not sold on the relationship things. I do believe you. But another thing is, like, I don't have much patience for, like, these text box boxes. Because I'm also, like, listening to an audiobook. So, mm-hmm. I can't really fuck with that. Also... Um, you know, I just, just until recently, I just really feel like I didn't have a lot of disposable income. Like, I'm not going to be giving people gifts. Like, I, like, had to sell everything that I got. Like, I'm foraging. I'm, like, hustling. Mm-hmm. I'm st- starting to come out of that. My farm is doing well. I got some chickens. Would you say I you're an undertaker? Mushrooms. I'm an undertaker. <laughs> and I'm a real undertaker. <laughs> and so, I feel like I'm coming out of that a little bit. But, um, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I'll th- I'll think about it. You know, you know, a lady can only go without a companion for so long. So <laughs> it's true. So I have been. I have given. I've got like one heart a piece for two ladies. I don't think they're single though. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you can still b- benefit from that. Like I said, yeah. <laughs> friends yeah, with benefits. Friend, friend, friends with benefits. Yeah, yeah. But I'll take that into consideration. But you know, it had me wondering as I'm lying on the couch playing this game like feeling really excited because i had all these chores to do i'm like why do we like chore games so much (laughs) what 
is it about? I'm like, oh, I have to like go do these three chores. <laughs> oh, I have so many chores to do. <laughs> like, I have a lot of chores I could be doing in real life. Don't feel any excitement about that. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. And gamification doesn't work for me in real life because I'm, yeah, I still like, I know that they're not really, it's not really a game. So it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But like in game chores, like oh, I gotta water all my crops. Oh, but on a rainy day, oh, what a relief! I'm like, oh, I get a few extra minutes for myself. <laughs> rainy days, they're for are mining. Mine days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're good for mining. Okay. Although fishing is probably good on rainy days too. They're probably, I think they're fishing like catching the rain. Mm-hmm. There's like special oh, fish okay. you can only get when it's raining. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> There's so many fun fish. I love fishing. I guess so. Uh, well, I guess I'll get my sword out of the chest and go down into the mines. <laughs> it's it fun, dude. I just don't remember any time I am by the mine, I don't have my sword on me because I got rid of it. Oh, I didn't get rid of it. I just put it in the chest because I was like, oh, I'll do this later. Anyway, that's I'm having see. fun with it. That's I'm having awesome. a good time. I need to. Yeah. This is going to be the push that I needed. I'm going to get back into Stardew. Time. Because yeah, let's do let's do a group game this weekend if we're feeling it. Yeah, and I want to see that. We might island. need to reach out to Aunt Brown a little sooner than her listening to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <Sunday>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's true. laughs> well, we'll see. This weekend might not be good for me, but okay, okay. Soon. Mm, soon. Awesome. That's all I got. That's sweet as hell. I'm. Ex- I was excited because I uh, I thought you might bring it, and I was excited that you're playing it and enjoying it. Yep, yep. And I'm glad you and Shart are starting to make ends meet. I'm very happy for yeah, you. Yeah, we really are. We're, we're starting to really thrive, so. <laughs> That's Things awesome. Things are good. Yeah, I'm excited to play with you, too. Cool. Baby Ben. Ben, what you got? I got a show, a Netflix show. Oh. Hey. Hate watch or good watch? Is it a stay here? Good watch. <laughs> so it's a show... That um, I was just browsing Netflix and uh, this, you know how Netflix automatically plays trailers? Mm-hmm. It started to play it and it was in French and I was like, ooh, a French show. Ooh la la. Um, <laughs> ooh la, ooh la la. <laughs> uh, because I just, there was another French show I watched called Call My Agent or Call Your, Call, Call My Agent. It's called 10% in French. It's not called Call My Agent. Um, but I have a guess about I, which show this is. Um, I watched that show and that show just ended. It's the fourth season just finished. And that was its last season. Aaron, right down And it's guess. pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's not an amazing show, but it, I just mostly liked it because it was in French. Mm. Um, and then this show showed up and I just loved it so much. And it's called Lupin. Uh-huh. Yeah, I knew that. Was that the one? Was that your guess? That was my guess. Well, I was going to say Lupin, <laughs> but Ben's probably more right on. Was it about a wolf? Um, <laughs> no. God, that's so embarrassing that you made that joke again. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a remake of Teen Wolf, Ben? <laughs> no. No. So the full title in French is Lupin dans l'ombre d'Arsène, which means Lupin in the shadow of Arsène. Of Arsène? Arsène. It's a Arsène. city. Is that a city? Okay. No. What is it? <laughs> it's so the the name Lupin comes from the French character the French fictional character Arsène Lupin, who is a he's called Arsène Lupin the gentleman burglar, <laughs> gentleman cambrioleur who was created in 1905 by French writer Maurice LeBlanc. And the story of the show is that the main character, Hassan Diop, played by Omar Sy, who I first heard about when I was taking French in high school because he was in the movie Les Antouchables, which was very popular, in which he won uh, the César for Best Actor for, and was the first black person to win hmm. the César for Best Actor. Um so he's great. And basically, Hassan Diop is really inspired as a kid by the Arsène Lupin books, because there's like a bunch of them. 
Mm-hmm. He's like a really popular old French character. Um, and kind of decides to like model his life after that and becomes like hmm. a, a really incredible thief and like master of disguise and and heist doer and wolf <laughs> and no <laughs> not even a wolf weirdly weird um yeah and it's just it's only five episodes apparently a second season is coming out uh later this year like in in the summer which is really exciting uh and so that's like the kind of the setup and then he the main story of it is that his dad worked for um worked for this really rich family as a driver they were immigrants from senegal um and got framed for stealing the collier de la reine which is a necklace that's like really famous for having belonged to Marie Antoinette. Mm. Um, and so he then tries to steal it back <laughs> and trouble ensues. That sounds so fun. It's so fucking fun. You know what? It, you know what I love about it is like, it kind of scratches that like mystery itch mm. of cop shows and like serial mm-hmm. killer glorifying shows Mm -hmm. without being like Mm copaganda or like even really about cops at all. It's just about like this really cool thief cool, and like kind of solve. And he's like working on solving the mystery of like what happened Mm -hmm. and like who actually stole the necklace and things like that. Um, It's just great. I just enjoyed it so much and it just was so fun to watch. It was great. I'm sorry if you said this and you said the French name, but he was in the Untouch Untouchables, which was such a good movie. I did say that. You did say that, but you said it in French. What did you say? Les Intouchables. Yeah, I didn't know that was the same one. (laughs) That was such a good movie. Yeah, I didn't see that. That's the one he won the César for Best Actor for. Cool. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's very good. He was in something else. I feel like too that I saw. Maybe not. He's in X Men. Oh, he's in X Men, and he was in Jurassic World. Apparently, wow. Huh. But he's good. Well, he's he's great. Sounds good, or great. I'm excited. I've been hearing a lot of great stuff about this. Me too, mostly from Ben, but p- still. Yeah, I think everyone should watch it. It's super good. Sweet. We actually do need a new show. It's a great show. I've been trying to convince Kylie to watch it. I watched it alone. Wow. Well, that was a weird Why doesn't way to say she want to watch it? I, it's not that she doesn't want to watch She does want to watch it. It's just every time I suggest it, she doesn't feel like watching a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you know how rough, it goes. Such a struggle. Rough, I do know how it goes. Sometimes the time person. is just never right. I, yeah, I'm that person. I'm, I am that other. I'm the, I'm the Ben. Because. I, well, I'm probably not the Ben because I'm sure you're very patient about it. But like. <laughs> when i when we are looking for something to watch the 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 most common response that ian gives me when i suggest something is maybe but not right now like every single thing and i and i'm like okay what do you want to watch right now because right now is when we need to watch something and you're not (laughs) suggesting anything so what am i supposed to do with probably but not right now (laughs) And then I storm out of the room to the bedroom and slam the door. And then I realize there's no TV in there. And also it's only five feet away. And so I come back out and we <laughs> just watch something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do you really do all that? No. In the slamming and the marching? No. Yeah. I don't slam. That doesn't really seem like you. No, I don't slam doors. That's not. You know, you're not really one to like walk away from a fight. <laughs> I feel like. so true. Can I tell you like the least relatable thing that happens in shows or in real life is when other people are like, I can't do this right now. and like, walk away. Yeah. I've never done that in my life. <laughs> and it, it, right before the end, it's like, let's double down right now. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how many from times my, it gets me in trouble <laughs> just... my experience it's somebody i feel like it could be good i feel like that like you know you sometimes just gotta go through it you know <laughs> yeah sometimes I'm not gonna get resolution by ignoring it so <laughs> yeah and it just drives me nuts so i just do it well what was that 
I sneeze. Oh, bless you. You're supposed to be like, I'm Thanks. sneezing. <laughs> I'm sneezing. I'm sneezing. Help. <laughs> <laughs> what if you didn't know what a sneeze was? Like, what if you somehow went Whoa. your whole life without sneezing until you were an adult? Oh, my gosh. And then you, like, felt it coming. You're like, what's this? <laughs> Do you think babies are scared the first time they sneeze? Mm. I bet they are. Yeah. I mean, they maybe... probably are going through that experience that I was just describing. <laughs> yeah, some, I guess Putting, we all like, did at some heads. point, right? Had a first sneeze. What if you never sneezed? What if you only ever almost sneezed? You know, that really ungratifying you thing know, where you want to sneeze, but then you does can't. Your... Does your partner ever do the thing where when you're in the, about to sneeze, they go, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, and it makes you not have to sneeze anymore? Or does your partner love you? <laughs> I've never heard of that. No. It fucking works. I don't know why. And Kylie does it to me all the time to troll me. That's so She's pranking mean. mean. She's pranking me. She's pranking you. <laughs> no, That's so cruel. No. No, Ian says, look at a it light, works, look at I a don't light. Know why it doesn't work. And then it, that works. I, that's never worked for me. Works. But I want to sneeze. Yeah. And I love sneezing. Looking yeah. at a light makes no, that's you supposed, sneeze. That's supposed to make you yeah. sneeze. Yeah, looking at a light. Oh. I feel like that's a troll. I feel like I'm going to look I at I don't know, a-, a lot of people say it. Yeah. I'm going to look at the sun, and then I'm going to have eye damage. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to be like, but I sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't say look I'm at blind, the sun. but I sneezed. You <laughs> said look at the light. That's like, that's like the ultimate light. <laughs> why wouldn't I like... What if, why wouldn't I just go for the most powerful solution? The ultimate light. Go big or go home, Ultimate Kylie. sneeze. <laughs> or Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about how Kylie makes me mad when she does that, but I sneeze. Yeah, that's so rude. It's truly rude. Uh, let, a, let a man sneeze, you know? <laughs> Man's got to sneeze. Uh, man's got to sneeze. Should we do homework? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, me first. Oh, uh, uh, I have a back, back, an outback. <laughs> hey Ben, any word on the particle on the particles making oh, yeah. you sneeze in your Good house? Question. Oh, that we talked no. about. Last Did you abandon that session. project? <laughs> no, I just i i handed over that that big set of data to some people who are better at analyzing data than I am. Oh, great. Huh. Wonderful. As like an example data set. Um, but also the numbers have been lower lately. Every time okay. I turn my hazel on, they've been cool. back to the usual range. So I think whatever it was has dissipated finally. Hmm. Interesting. I feel like All that right. supports your theory about what it was. Yes, I agree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Okay. Homework. Homework. Um, my homework is, um, if you want something to hate watch, if you want to, um, shit, what was that? If you want to, if you think you can avoid seeing this show through a lens, a show as a lens through which to understand all society's ills, or if you'd like to maybe watch it as a lens through which to understand all society's ills, check out Stay Here on Netflix. Um, it's also very weird because it's like so deeply pre-COVID that like, it's just like very you know at the beginning of covid when um when you would watch shows and be like oh they're all standing too close together and like then that kind Mm. of went away but then it's Mm. just like weird to watch these shows uh, because this because i thought it was new i was like did they screen all these people like why are they like i'm I'm, like looking Mm. for masks for evidence (laughs) that of of, like when this was filmed and then i didn't realize so i was totally done that it was filmed in 2018 so anyway um uh, that's my homework, and then also like rehab addict is really hard to find. Actually, I had to pay for episodes of it, a lot of them. But uh, if you can find, there's some on Pluto TV. They are really fun to watch. Um, she's like a very smart uh, cookie, so I would recommend that show if you can find it. Um, and my Twitter and Instagram are Anthropology. Um, watch me uh, participate in video game playing on uh twitch dot t v slash um maddie pizza table um every tuesday at eight p m we're playing through i love participating in video <laughs> game playing <laughs> <laughs> we're playing through majora's mask right now we've gotten through like the first the first three days and now we're doing our second uh-huh. round next time 
Um, so I just have the first three days. There are only three days. (laughs) Round of three days. Uh, the first cycle. The first cycle, Ben. Wow. (laughs) Rude. Um, and then that's it. Aaron, what's your homework? My homework is to, if you're so inclined, play Stardew Valley. It's on Switch. It's on Steam. I don't know what else it's on. Google it. That's it's all like I know. It's like everywhere, dude. It's like everywhere, yeah. You use this play Is it like it. PlayStation and stuff? I actually don't know. Let wow. me see. See? Ben's going to Google <gasps> Let me it. Let Switch. Everybody. Yeah, it's on everything, dude. Microsoft, Mac, Linux, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch. PlayStation Vita, iOS, Android. Oh God. What? Really? It's on mobile? Oh, yeah. I, do, I did know it was on mobile. I have a friend who's playing it on mobile. Listen, get it on Switch, though. You can just lie on your couch and or on your hammock chair on a nice day and play it. You know how everyone has those. <laughs> yeah. Get a Switch. Just, just get a Switch. Get a Switch. Um, get a Switch. That's all. Ben, that's all I got. what's your homework? My homework is to watch Lupin on Netflix. L-U-P-I-N. Great show. Fun show to watch. It's in French. Do you have any social medias you want to say? Twitter. Nicely proved Ben. Twitch Disco Greg. Bye. Bye. the show. If you want to call us. Show's over now. Leave us a voicemail. Or if you want to text us, you can do either of those things at our phone number 774-326-0420 blaze, blaze it. it blaze it with, don't, don't dial blaze, blaze it don't dial blaze it <laughs> you can find us on twitter at too broad pod you can find us on instagram at way too broad um you can email us at way too broad at gmail.com um let us know what you think of the dream song and um let us know that you got the message about not mocking Katy perry thank you and we don't do it. We don't do it. And um, waitubroad.com is our website if you missed any of that stuff for anything you want. Earnben.com for anything you need. Maxfun.org for uh, a delightful, adorable dog on a boat. And um, that's it. So thanks for listening. Thank you. I remember to light a podcast candle this week. This is the first Thank time. Thank God, in three Hannah. Weeks. This is the first time in three weeks. Yeah. So the podcast candle. Just delicious island margarita fragrance mm. is now extinguished. Goodbye. Bye. We love you. <laughs> Don't mock Katy Perry. Don't mock Katy Perry. Don't mock Katy Perry. Hey,